Hey everyone and welcome, I am Sailor Drew, and today we are reviewing... <laughs> Did you hear the thud? The, <laughs> the official companion guide for Animal Crossing. So I haven't been able to post any of my gaming videos just because uh, my computer can't handle the high graphics or anything like that. I'm still in the process of trying to save up for a really nice computer that'll last me a really long time. But I can do these types of videos um, where you know, I'm just doing something with like my webcam, but this thing is huge. <laughs> it took us a little while to get um, in the US because our release date was later than other countries. Not only that, but they oversold the pre-orders. So um, there was only like a scant few who was able to get the, uh, the guide whenever it was first released. Um, I unfortunately was not one of those people. So I'm really excited to look through this. My husband looked through it a little bit. He opened up the plastic for me, which is really nice because I hate doing the plastic. Like, I don't know. I just always have to fight with it. Um, so my first impressions of the book is, dear God, <laughs> it's surprisingly really heavy. Um, this thing is just shy of like three and a half pounds. Um, it's 432 pages, so it's a big boy. Not quite as big as the two companion guides that Japan got released because theirs are over a thousand pages each, so I'm really jealous. Um, something else to know is that when we got this released, uh, new content that's not in the book had already come out, um, like some events and stuff like that. So some people were a little perturbed. Um, I think that for the future, um, companies that do companion guides should do what um, MMORPG companion guides typically do is they'll release a physical copy and then you'll also get a, a digital copy that will automatically update like for free, like as an add-on bonus. Um, so, and for Animal Crossing, for us to be continually getting new content, I definitely think that they should have done that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, mine came slightly damaged. Uh, there's, uh, like a tiny little bit of, like, a, like a, a little tear in the corner. Um, this is something that's been happening, um, for the past, like, year, where all the stuff that we've been in ordering off of Amazon is actually, um, <clears throat> pardon me, coming damaged. <laughs> so it's not a huge issue for me. Um, so I'm not going to be returning it. Uh, it is perfect bound, which means, um, so like magazines and stuff like that, like, um, where the signatures or the pages are glued to the binding. That's what perfect binding means. Um, the little leaves are embossed, which is a nice little touch see if I can kind of get, um, and the dust jacket, yes, this is a dust jacket, is nice and kind of like buttery soft, like, uh, it's got a really nice texture to it, um, and this is the back, it just has the, um, USB, or the USB, <laughs> um, well, now that I've said USB, I can't think of what the barcodes are called, but it's got the, uh, I think it's like IS or something like that, uh, barcodes, and official Nintendo licensed product and all that jazz. And the embossed uh, leaves, which we see on the inside here, more of. So let's see here. I'm going to turn off my autofocus as well because um, this camera just, it doesn't understand what it's trying to focus on. Uh, so it says, welcome resident, and then it has like just like a little note inside, uh, but let's go ahead and take the dust jacket off so that way we can see what it looks like. This is insane to me. This is the, so I buy uh, companion guides for games that I'm like really jazzed about and obsessed about because I take my own notes anyways. So all of my other um, guides you'll see, or uh, guides, well, that you won't see because I don't really show these off very often, but um, there will be like pages, like loose leaf pages of like things that I've printed off, like Excel spreadsheets that I've made, because you guys know that I make Excel spreadsheets for games, um, also notes, uh, stuff like that. So like there will be like my own notes in here. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. So the format is uh, something that I, I came to expect 
with the photos and then also um, little blips of like uh, you know what's what uh, so meet the locals um, I'm really curious to see any comparison videos that might be out there of what our guide is like versus the Japanese guides and what information we're missing so it's really well done um, let's see here so Daisy May Island Roll uh, just got a little breakdown here is an expert turnip seller. Turnips are a special vegetable that can be purchased from Daisy May every Sunday morning, 5 a.m. to 12 p.m. for between 90 to 110 bells for a bundle of 10. With empty pockets and a full wallet, you can buy up to 4,000 turnips at once. Once you've purchased your turnips, you have one week to sell them back before they go bad. Nobody wants to buy or eat a rotten turnip. If you haven't sold your turnips by Saturday, it's wise to do so regardless of the price to recover at least some of your investment. So I actually opened up a Animal Crossing group, so um, hopefully anybody who joins um, will be able to get really good turnip prices, but I'm really interested to kind of see what information this holds because um, there is a lot of misinformation that's going around in uh, Animal Crossing groups where for instance there was a rumor going around where if you left turnips outside in the rain they would rot and things like that um, there might not ah, ha, ha, ha. okay I was about to say it might not explain anything about time traveling because that's also something else that a lot of people don't seem to know um, a lot of new people to the franchise and then people that don't necessarily pay attention in the Facebook groups that they're in because I see this post every single day where they complain about their turnips rotting and this is why temporarily temper uh, temperamental uh, temporally temperamental turnips be forewarned turnips are especially sensitive to time paradoxes if for whatever reason the time your island travels backwards by any amount all your turnips will instantly become rotten if you're expecting a disruption in the natural flow of time, then proceed with extreme caution. So the game developers say that time traveling isn't cheating or anything like that, but buying turnips is a little bit anxiety inducing because um, you can lose all your turnips if you forget that you have them and then time travel backwards. Uh, so and it does have the weekly price flux fluctuations so that way you can kind of get an idea if you're going to have a really good week of turnips, which is great information to have. Um, it's got a KK slider breakdown as well as all of the, um, the songs here, which is imperative to type out in the exact way that the, it's listed. It has to have like, so uh, Mr. KK it has to have the capital M lowercase r dot space capital K dot capital K dot <laughs> or he's not gonna know what you want which I'm like oh god like I don't know I guess it would be too much to put in the game for him to like guess like what you want if you like just put in bubblegum or something you know like have to sit there and guess what you want to listen to um so let's see here it's got island residents um this is something else that a lot of people don't know coming to the franchise that personality types are determined by um, or gender specific which I think is super lame uh, like male personalities lazy jock cranky smug uh, female personality sweet peppy snooty big sis and then it has the different types of animal types so that you can have here at the bottom so I don't have a lot of variety on my island actually like I don't have any deer I never see any deer on any um, islands like whenever I go hunting <laughs> the hamsters are my favorite I think they're adorable and chubby and small and I think that they um, we should get more it also has information about um, villager like uh, kind of like events like um, you can have them request something from you like if um, you know they want you to catch like a specific type of fish or bug 
Um, sometimes they get sick, which is adorable and also sad. There's also, um, so like delivery requests, I never, I haven't had any of these yet. So it's kind of interesting that this is in here. I was actually kind of scared that they took this out because this was like the whole premise of the original game essentially, was you were just kind of running errands. So I, I don't know, it, it's kind of interesting to see in here, but um, treasure hunt. So that's really fun. Um, you get a few minutes to go hunting for a buried treasure. So it's a good idea to dig up all your fossils at the beginning of the day and any bamboo shoots that you have to dig up yet. So that way it's a little bit easier to tell which spot to dig up. Um, let's see here. So it's got a breakdown of the villagers and their uh, their little um, their favorite colors, their little saying, um, what they look like in this game because um, you know their clothing or whatever might be a little bit different. Um, does have information about new villagers like Judy and Raymond are new and they don't have amiibo cards so they're in here as well. This is a great tool to sit here and look at like if you're missing a personality type because personality types are also um, like the DIY recipes that they make and the reactions that they teach you are also um, personality type specific. So it's a good idea to have one of each personality type uh, on your island at any given point in time. So for right now, like I'm missing um, a cranky villager and a jock villager. So I think I'm going to try and find Wolfgang and Snake probably. I just don't really care for the jocks a whole lot because they always talk about their abs. So <laughs> the first jock that I ever had was um, Poncho and he is a cub so he's a small bear so it's just kind of funny watching like this small bear um run around and talk about his abs and how jacked he was <laughs> i was just like okay <laughs> you say so uh let's see here audie should be in here too she's new as well so yeah we got some new vi villagers so um each section of the guide is indicated by these like little tabs um little color tabs which you can see on the side here but all in all it seems like a really great guide like um, it's got a lot of information this is something that I could definitely go through and read for hours and hours um, even though I probably know most of the information from just me figuring things out um, as well as reading what other people have been figuring out uh, free resources online and stuff like that. Um, it's still, I don't know. I just, I still really enjoy getting these. Like it's definitely not necessary to buy. There's not a, you know, a lot of huge mysteries in the game to where you need somebody to walk you through. Um, you know, kind of like a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> like you might want to get the companion guide or or something like that but um, this it's just kind of I don't know it's a little bit of an extra way to kind of love the game and really dive into it so um, here it's talking about storage which we need more storage in our house because we don't have enough um, the main storyline progression this is a great tool um, I see a lot of people asking what they're supposed to do because they still haven't gotten KK slider um, this is actually a really great walkthrough just looking at it here skimming over it for the first time it's got little check boxes as well which is really nice I don't think I would ever write inside of a book because it always feels like blasphemous but um, I do intend on and have purchased a bullet journal specifically just for games so that way I have everything in one spot instead of loose leaf papers in the guides um, so I might um, transpose this information if I like how it's laid out into the journal. Um, it kind of explains how to choose your island. So unfortunately, if you don't like the islands that it's given you to choose from because it gives you four in the beginning, you have to re-roll the game. So you have to restart the game really quickly. Um, eventually, I just didn't care what my character looked like. and. I <laughs> 
Oh, like, because I stopped making my character and um, worrying so much about that. And then I finally found an island because it's really important what island you choose because you can't move the resident services. That's uh, one of two buildings that you cannot move. The other one being DAL, um, Dodo Airline. Wait, what is it? just Dodo Airlines? Is that what it is? Um, so my, I like restarted because my um, resident services was way too close and off center. So I chose one where it was like off to the side because um, it was kind of hard to see an island that it gave me where it would have um, lined up perfectly with the off ramp at DAL. Uh, you also can't move your uh, your pier, um, any of like the big rocks, or like do any really major terraforming on the beaches. You cannot also, <laughs> or you also cannot move your river mounts. So that's really important to take a look at and kind of see. So eventually you'll be able to move all of your rivers and everything with terraforming once you unlock it after KK Slider comes to do his concert on your island. But you can't move the river mouth, so if that's important to you, um, you might want to pay attention to that as well. Uh, let's see here. So talks about your Nook phone upgrading Blathers tent. I just recently got my very last fossil for Blathers, so that was really exciting. Um, I had to get it from somebody because I like I literally assess like about. Uh, like 80 or so fossils and it wasn't in any of those because I was like saving them up and uh, yeah <laughs> so there's Abel um, she comes to your island and eventually builds a, uh, a, a brick and mortar store um, talks about Isabel let's see here oh and it talks about um, your rating so and KK Slider's con, uh, concert. So it says effect on island rating. Positive, plenty of adult trees, any type. Plenty of flowers, any type. Build the museum. Upgrade Nuke's Cranny, which you do by playing the game for, um, I think it's like 30 days. Um, build the Able Sister Shop. Place fences. Build bridges and inclines. Place DIY furniture. Bigger are best. Negative, lots of small items on the ground, too many trees, 220 plus, too much clutter, can't walk around easily, or too many weeds. So those are things that negatively affect your islands. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, achievements. Yeah, so this game introduces a new system, the Nook Mileage Program System, and it's kind of like um, an additional type of currency, essentially where um, you do tasks or reach achievements and you're awarded mileage. That way you can kind of upgrade your inventory, um, get additional recipes, travel to the Nook Mystery Island Tours. So if you see anybody use the abbreviation NMT, that's what that's talking about, those tickets. So you can go to the islands and look for new people. So it has all of the achievements laid out here. This is going to be really helpful. So I'm actually probably going to uh, get like one of my little post-it tabs and tabulate this section here because I'm curious to see which ones I'm missing and what I need. Um, oh, see right here. It's got a um, bug off. Participate in the bug off in each of the four months that it occurs. So today is actually the first day of the uh, that we've had the bug off in the northern hemisphere so this is going to be uh, interesting to me so June July August and September and so this is gonna be a little bit interesting because I wonder if this caters to a northern hemisphere or if it has everything for the southern hemisphere as well so I'm not quite sure how we'll be able to tell Okay, here we go, right here, perfectly. So the blue up top or the blue on bottom indicates the hemisphere in this little circle, and then it gives you the date. So Young Spring Bamboo is available February 25th to May 31st in Northern Hemisphere, and in the Southern, August 25th to November 30th. So interesting. 
So it talks about the seasons and kind of like the uh, season specific things that you can get like ornaments, mushrooms. Uh, we had a mushroom lamp crafting party in my Facebook group for Animal Crossing. So it's called Animal Crossing uh, Zen Garden. So um, games that I do, uh, game groups that I do, I will do, uh, I'll call it like Zen Garden because I always like want to like zero drama. Because <laughs> I'm like, life is too short and is a game like no drama, please and thank you. Uh, here it talks about different types of weather phenomenons. Uh, so rainbows, I know a lot of people ask about rainbows if it means anything. Um, oh, it actually, wow, they're actually seasonal and tied to a specific uh, time block. So for the rainbow, February 25th to November 25th, um, Southern Hemisphere is going to be August 25th to May 25th. So time that they'll appear, they'll appear between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Rainbow will sometimes form in the sky in the hour following rain or heavy rain if the weather changes to bright and clear or sunny. Rainbows only appear for 45 minutes, so turn your key skyward once the rain has stopped if you don't want to miss it. There's even a 50% chance that you'll witness a double rainbow. Ah, oh, fantastic. Uh, so, Bor Aurora Borealis, those occur during, like, the winter months. Uh, it doesn't affect your play in any way, but it does make for gorgeous photos. Uh, thunder, it's perfectly safe to be outside, so you're not going to get struck by thunder or anything like that, or uh, have any of your stuff be destroyed, like in Stardew Valley, <laughs> or one of your fruit trees turn into a cold tree temporarily. That was interesting. Um, let's see here, fog, um, and then also meteor shower. So a meteor shower can, uh, it's all year and between 7 p.m. and 4 a.m. A meteor shower can only occur at night on rare occasions where the weather has been bright and clear throughout the entire day. Most meteor showers will be light, but if you're lucky, it's also possible to encounter heavy showers. Celeste will only appear during meteor showers. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> Uh, and it's also possible to prey upon a star to cause a prey. I don't know. It just sounds like prey, like bird of prey or like <laughs> pouncing on your prey. I don't know why. Uh, it should be like wish upon a star, but maybe they were scared Disney was going to come after them. <laughs> They're kind of like super aggressive about their properties. Uh, to cause unique star fragments to wash up on island shore the next day. Turn to page 57 for more details, which we will do that because I'm curious, because that's actually not true. Um, Celeste will appear on semi-cloudy nights as well, um, where there are no stars, unless you're going to actually sit there for the, like, what, entire, uh, what is it, like, nine hours or so to see if the clouds clear up. Um, so, and then she actually... Uh, there's also a possibility that she won't appear on um, meteor shower nights. So I'm <laughs> I'm like, oh, we've already found a discrepancy in the book, um, which I guess is bound to happen, 57. I also like doing that. I also like finding mistakes and then putting a post-it note in it and being like, this is a lie. Um, one of the most mistake-ridden uh, game guides I have ever purchased. <clears throat> Pardon me. My allergies have been crazy, which is not really great during a pandemic, but there you go. Um, the, um, the most mistake written game guide I've ever owned was, uh, the one for the Twilight Princess because I bought it on the GameCube and the GameCube and the Wii, like everything was transposed. So there was like a lot of mistakes in the GameCube version of the guide. I'm not sure about the Wii one, like maybe somebody will be able to tell me who purchased it, but um, yeah, that one was like, it, it was really bad. I was actually kind of upset about that because like a couple mistakes is fine, but like <laughs> when there's several, it's like, okay, <laughs> like come on. Um, so let's see here. Uh, so it took us to the uh, Celeste's NPC breakdown page. We're uh, in the meet the locals section. Uh, let's see here. Oh, her birthday is September 7th. Okay, you guys, I, uh, I'm obsessed with Celeste. Like, she's like my favorite. She's so 
so adorable. I love her so much. <laughs> like, she's got this giant pink bow that's like the size of her head and everything. Oh, I just, she's so freaking cute. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. So she offers um, the zodiac furniture indicative of that um, time of the year, like the next time you meet her. Um, so right now we just got done or we're still in. I'm a Gemini, so I'm like, I feel like I should know this, but uh, the Gemini furniture. So uh, yeah, the Gemini closet. So next we should be getting the cancer table. Um, and then so on and so forth. So let's see here. Each month she'll offer you the recipe for a different Zodiac themed piece of furniture. The Zodiac set recipes or a set requires fragments to build, but they're definitely worth it. If Celeste has already given you the recipe for that month's Zodiac furniture, she'll give you a bundle of star... F what? I feel like this is a lie to you. She'll give you a bundle of star fragments, zodiac fragments, or a star wand. I have never once, and I am an avid time traveler, okay? Um, I have never once received a star fragment from her, or a zodiac fragment, or a star wand. <laughs> um, I've gotten, uh, the first recipe she gives you is the star wand regardless of anything um and then after that she'll give you uh the zodiac furniture and then um that is specific to that time of year that you're in and then after that anytime you see her um she'll give you random stuff um which could include different types of wands there's even a wand that's like an iron pipe which is hilarious to run around with if you're wearing a ski mask um uh, flower wands stuff like that um but yeah i have never once gotten a bundle <laughs> Or fragments or zodiac fragments or a wand from her uh, so that's another issue in the book so I'm this is gonna be fun like now I'm excited like I'm like ooh, there's so many mistakes in here I'm excited <laughs> is that horrible of me I don't know it's probably horrible the only thing that I can think of is that she gives you that stuff if you know every single one of her DIYs but she's given me duplicates already and I don't know any uh, all of her recipes that she gives you so uh, yeah so island roll Celeste will only show up between 7 p.m. and 4 a.m. on nights where there's a meteor shower when you first meet her she'll give you a recipe for a star wand a magic wand that can instantly change your outfit this recipe requires a special material called star fragments yeah hmm all right like, who do I need to write to? Like, I need to be a guide writer. Oh my god, could you imagine? Be so, like, thorough and, like, like, <laughs> be so hyper organized. Um, let's see here. It talks about stage growths of trees. Um, trees are nice to have. I'm favoring the cedar trees on my island because I'm. I'm not really doing a tropical theme. Uh, palm trees are nice. So uh, you basically steal some coconuts from a Nook uh, Mystery Tour Island and then you're able to come back and plant them on your island. Or you can dig up the whole tree if you consume some fruit and then you can dig up a whole tree afterwards. Um, a nice trick is that if once you unlock terraforming you can put like a patch of sand somewhere on your island. because coconut trees can only go on sand so like on the grass put a square of sand and then you can plant the coconut tree there so that way you can kind of um if you want to do like a really tropical type of island and you want palm trees like everywhere like i have anka she's like the little egyptian cat um i put some palm trees outside of her house and that's how i did that let's see here it talks about weeds or as we call it in um, my group uh leaf's lettuce <laughs> Because since the pandemic, um, they, everybody on Facebook is working from home. So um, a lot of groups are about to get zucked because people are talking about buying and selling weeds. Because <laughs> you need them to make hedges and other recipes. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> it's just like, like we put up a word alert. So that way if somebody specifically says buying or selling weeds, um, we can delete the comment and just say, like, hey, like just a reminder, like bots are running everything and they're really stupid. So they're zucking and uh, dinging uh, groups 
on their report cards <laughs> for it. So I don't know. I, it's a little funny, but it's also really, really ridiculous. Ooh, breeding flowers. So, um, let's see here. Oh yes. Okay. So I had noticed this. Um, it's got the sale prices for common, rare, and very rare. Um, so this is for the entire plant or if you pluck it, it doesn't matter. So for common, like a white rose, for instance, like any of the quote unquote vanilla flowers, they're 40. The rare hybrid, so like a pink uh, rose, the pink uh, hyacinths, um, a lot of the other um, hybrids, it's gonna be 80 and then for the very rare, like the blue rose, which is so hard to get. Um, and another myth busted about these is that they do breed with one another and they do propagate more blue roses. So a lot of people in another group I saw, like, I mean, it was a like gospel. I'm just like, God, that's not right. Um, the only flowers that do not uh, propagate with one another and create more are the golden roses which are very rare so it's nice to pluck those you can use them for crafting materials for certain things but um it's kind of nice if you got a big field of them you can make a lot of money because they sell for a thousand each uh, so it's gonna be the gold roses don't uh, breed more with each other um, and then also the uh, lily of the valley that you start to see on your island like once a week so long as you have a five star rating um, so that's pretty good. Ooh, yes, data nerd. Like, <laughs> I'm like, fantastic. Uh, yeah, so it has a breeding chart. This is something else that's been going around. People make really amazing looking infographics that are completely wrong. Um, so one of my mods, um, I guess she's a, like a science major and she looked at the data mined information uh, that helped out a lot of people with actually getting the blue roses because they are the hardest to get in the game. Um, and she said that they actually use real genetics to um, to make this mechanic in the game. So I thought that was really interesting. She was super excited about it and I was just like, like I did pretty okay in life sciences in school, but um, yeah, I'll just take your word for it. <laughs> Uh, so this is really interesting. This is great. Um, so especially for people who are trying to get blue roses on their own instead of um, just buying them off of people or like buying them off of eBay. <laughs> uh, and then it also does indicate um, that you need to get a gold watering can and water black roses to get the gold roses. So. And that's something else that people don't know is that the black roses, um, they have a chance of producing golden roses if they've ever been watered by a, a golden watering can. It doesn't matter if it was like the night before or a month before. They'll always have the chance, like if it rains or anything like that, or if somebody comes over with a regular watering can and waters them again to produce gold. So. That's kind of nice. It's a nice surprise. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, fishing spots. So this is interesting, especially since um, for us in the Northern Hemisphere, we now have sharks. It is now shark season, which is going to be interesting because diving is going to be unlocked here shortly. <laughs> Just like every shark phobia I've ever had is about to come raging into life. <laughs> like full form. Um, eels, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, which is like always going to be like the sea bass, right? Extra, extra large, and then sharks. Uh, let's see here. Um, this is going to be interesting. So fishing spots and very helpful for if you terraform all of your uh, rivers and ponds and everything. So you kind of know what you need because um, you need a river cliff and... Um, a pond, uh, and then also certain fish types will only spawn at certain levels. So if you go to the Nook Mile, uh, Nook Mystery Tour islands a lot to do uh, all of your fishing, which is what I typically do, you might not um, be worried about that too much. Um, ooh, wow. Fish occurrences, lowest occurrence, small occurrence. 
Yeah, um, so what was it? There was some sort of fish that was like super rare that everybody was trying to get and then my husband got it like within four tries because he's like the luckiest person ever. Can't remember which one it was. <laughs> it was, like, it was uh, towards the beginning of the game. So it's already out of season. Um, I was like, are you serious? <laughs> Like, of course, of course you would get it. Uh, so here's like the informational breakdown of each fish. Uh, let's see here. So function loop on off. I'll have to kind of read more to kind of see what that means. Yeah, layout platform. Oh, so I guess that means if you can put it on top of a table or not. Yeah, platform and tabletop, so a carp you could put on a table or on the ground. So that might be more interesting to you if like, um, when you gift them to villagers, they'll put them in their house. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, animates loop, oh, interesting, okay, yeah, I'll have to read more about that and kind of, so that way I can kind of understand what that stat means. Uh, here's information about bugs, so I imagine it's going to mention Flick once or twice in here. Um, Atlas Moth, I have yet to catch one of those and donate it. Um, Orchid Mantis, Orchid Mantis, and the Mantis are my favorite in the game because they like flare up and like whenever you get close to them so they get all, like all territorial. It's like really cute. Um, so, but I really like them in real life anyways. My husband thinks that they're too freaky looking. I have a phobia of scorpions, so um, I'm just gonna like put a post-it note over that square and just pretend like it never exists. Uh, and the museum, the butterfly room, is like my favorite room to be in. It's really cool. Uh, let's see here. So fossils. So when do fossils appear? Every day at 5 a.m. between 2 and 6, <coughs> newly generated fossils can appear somewhere on your island. If you don't collect them all, you'll end up with a maximum of six fossils waiting to be dug up. Want to quickly kickstart your collection? More buried fossils can also be unearthed by visiting other islands via the mystery, mystery tour, even if you've already dug up all of those available on yours. Remember that seeking out buried fossils every day is the most efficient way to work towards completing your museum collection. So I wonder if it talks about like rarity. Um, the price list is definitely nice. Um, I mean, at this point in time, I sell everything anyway, so I guess it, you know, it doesn't matter that much. Like fishing, like I'll fill my inventory full of fish, but then I'll like swap out the sea bass for like more expensive fish as I like continue on. Uh, yeah, so it talks about the seasonal tourneys here. Um, you get more points if you have people come over and help. With the fishing tourney, and I haven't tried the bug tourney yet today, I haven't gotten a chance to, uh, to sit down and play yet, but um, it also waives a 500 bell fee, so that's really nice. Um, then that way you can get like um, the 300 points that you need for the golden trophies, as well as multiples of the prizes if you want. Uh, like the bug tourney has a really nice um, and cool looking spider web. Uh, decoration that I know a lot of people want so that's a that's the best way to do it is do it with other people the workbench uh, so this one is gonna be really interesting to me because I am somewhat nearing probably uh, save for the crowns and some of the reeds um, I'm kind of getting close to the point to where I've gotten all of the recipes in the game so um, most everyone that I know and every island that I've been to, they've had their extra DIY recipes at like the entrance of the, uh, of their island. So yeah, save for like the Christmas trees and stuff, illuminated trees, um, and stuff for like winter. Um, I mean, I even have most of the fall because my husband's island is in the Southern Hemisphere. So yeah. <laughs> Got all the fragments listed and everything, uh, different types of resources, so that way you know um, what's available. It's got more stuff about the zodiac stuff. Uh, balloons. At random times throughout the day, balloons will float over your island, and you can shoot them down using your slingshot. 
It's always worth aiming for these when you uh, see one. Although balloons can contain a number of different items such as furniture and bells, the most highly coveted among them are the seasonal recipes. They only contain these at particular times of the year, and in these cases the recipes they provide are the only source for some truly spectacular items, so be sure to have your slingshot at the ready. Um, there's like a, an, see, and again, um, there's an infographic um, saying that the color balloon dictates what the balloons drop, which is completely untrue. The only color balloons that actually indicate what's inside is going to be the, uh, the striped ones from the Bunny Day event, and then the golden ones. So I was kind of curious if it mentioned anything like that in there. Uh, let's see here. Recipe packs. It talks about uh, what you can get at Nook's Cranny. Um, ooh. Wow. So it's going to have every single recipe that the game had at release in here. It's not going to have um, like the mermaid stuff that's coming up in the... Um, in the July 3rd update, unfortunately, uh, but this is a nice visual so that way I can kind of see which recipes I'm missing. Uh, it's got a little checkbox so that you can check off. Again, I don't think I will because I just, I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I have no, like, say, <laughs> like, on, like, how to use a book because I won't sit here and write in a book but I'll doggy ear like novels which is like a totally monstrous thing to do um, but there you have it <laughs> I guess I'm just gonna be a monster um, but yeah the fact that it doesn't have all of the SC uh, star head I want this so bad Celeste give it to me um, the fact that it doesn't have all the recipes this is another reason why I think that Either they should have just released everything and just given us spoilers, or they should have given us also a digital copy uh, that updates. Um, because, I, I don't know, it, it does, it feels a little sour to uh, know that you have this thing that you waited months to get, um, and it doesn't have everything. <laughs> like, it stinks! Uh, oh, so island rating. Um, let's see here. So star rating values development. So points. It's a point system. So less than 80 points uh, for development and then less than 200 for scenery. It's going to be one star. To get a five star for development, you need 665 points and uh, 450 plus uh, points for scenery to receive a five star. So I just have too much crap on my ground to get a five star. Um, so, but I guess I had it uh, for like a brief moment in time because I, uh, oh gosh, it has a math breakdown for the points and everything. This is ultra da data nerd stuff, which I very much appreciate, but I am definitely not going to sit there and calculate what I need for my islands. <laughs> like, like, it's something interesting, but I'm not going to sit there and be like, okay. <laughs> like, I have four benches, which according to this formula, equals this mouse. Um, let's see, our Happy Home Academy. The creepy people that sneak into our home at night to raid our house. They do deduct points if you have something turned around. Because there's certain things that um, will, like... Cause I'm like, we have five billion like kitchen items. Why don't we actually have counters for the kitchen, like legitimate counters? So people will turn desks around to face up against the wall to use those as countertops in their kitchens, and they'll actually deduct points for that, which is dumb. But there you have it. They're very very picky, but they're actually kind of more lenient than they used to be. I think um, I'll have to read up on this, but it seems like. They don't get so angry if you have mixed map, uh, mixed furniture, um, like they used to, like in the original game. They used to want you to have like, like all matching stuff. So let's see here, and this is talking about. Um, <clears throat> 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Ooh, no, feng shui. Yeah, I think I remember that too, that it, uh, they actually... Interesting. Okay, so color bonus. Most furniture items are assigned their two most prominent colors by default. These are known as system colors and are used to determine the room's color and feng shui bonuses. You'll be awarded the color bonus if over 70% of the furniture placed in a room matches in at least one system color. Some furniture items don't have any system colors, but these still can be matched with other colorless furniture to get the color bonus. Keep in mind that custom designs, wallpaper, and flooring won't be counted for any color-related bonuses if your house has multiple rooms. Uh, each room's color bonus will be calculated separately. Every furniture item must also be unique, so duplicates won't be counted. The color bonus triples per item if 90%, if over 90% of the room is a match. So removing any items that don't fit in can be a great way to boost your score. To see each item system color, check out the full furniture list starting on page 353. Well, we'll get there. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, and then it also talks about feng shui, how like um, each uh, direction has like a different color that you want to try and get. Um, those in so I guess it's a little bit more lenient and then like if you have like a teal and pink room like it'll be happy with that because you're sticking to two uh, primary color themes so that's kind of nice uh, so let's see here seasonal bonus uh, my friend Megan who has played every single Animal Crossing game um, she started playing whenever I got the game uh, she played on my oh I'm sorry <laughs> it was a little frightening um she played on my GameCube, um, and then she ended up getting the game for herself. And then I never realized, but she she's played every single game. I've only ever played the original in Pocket Camp, um, and she's talked about this a lot. That she knows this for a fact. That um, seasonal bonuses, like um, they really like a seasonal furniture in your house. So I have to tell her, I'm like you were right. It's still in the game. Congratulations! <laughs> All your years of hard work have paid off. Um, so now it's got the furniture breakdown by type, like by theme, horror, uh, fitness, folk art, freezing cold, garage, garden, fancy, living room, outdoors, office, school, party, space, zen style, shop, and so on. Then it talks about penalties, which of course cockroaches um, is going to be an issue. Prizes. See, this is also why I don't really care too much about like how amazing my house looks right now, because a I've, I keep running out of storage, and also b uh, the prizes aren't too fantastic. Um, so if you get like an S rank, which is the highest, you get the gold H H A trophy. So, which I know trophies they like t you to have trophies in your house and stuff, but meh, I'm not too concerned over it. Uh, let's see here, landscaping, island designer, uh, terraforming is a term that, um, gamers have coined to talk about landscaping in the game. Um, it's not, like, something Nintendo is like, this is terraforming or whatever. Uh, so, but it makes sense, because you're tearing down cliffs and putting them up, and then also, like, you know, messing with the water and everything, so, I don't know, terraforming makes more sense to me, but... There you have it, um, the catalog. Okay, yeah, this one. Um, oh, fantastic. So all of the different features that you can get. Um, this is something that people don't know as well. There's like a secret hairstyle in that if you time travel, you get a, a messy hair hairstyle. When your person walks out, you'll get an animation. Well, they have like kind of this bedhead look, which is actually really cute. Um, and they'll fluff up their hair to get back to like to their original hairstyle. But when you go back into like the mirror to uh, change your look, it'll actually be unlocked for you to use now. So um, you have to unlock more and more hairstyles with Nook Miles at the kiosk. I really hope that they add more. Um, there's only like a couple of uh, kind of like inclusive hairstyles that are like for people of color and there's actually a um a what is it it's not a survey what 
<laughs> oh, a petition. <laughs> I'm like, what is it called? A uh, petition for them to add more because there's like only a couple um, like kind of dread styles and then that's kind of it. But um, yeah, and then it talks about, um, oh, and it kind of gives you ideas of like how to do different stuff. So that's pretty nice, especially if you don't have a Nintendo online account and you can't go online and download stuff. This way you can kind of get an idea and, uh, oh god, the Ziggy Stardust lightning bolt. I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so this is nice. It kind of gives you an idea of how to do different patterns, um, like plaid, uh, buttons, it looks like, bows, different types of bows. I need help with this. For sure, because bows are kind of hard to do. Um, and then it uh, goes on to talk about <laughs> the Ziggy Stardust. I love it. Even the red hair. I'm like, I know exactly what you're doing. I'm on to you. Um, huge David Bowie fan, by the way. Uh, oh, there's that iron <laughs> pipe one that I was talking about. Uh, then it goes on to talk about uh, how to use wands, um, where one item gets kind of tucked away. So like if you want to use this adventure hat, you uh, like explorer hat, um, you have to have multiples if you want to use it for multiple um, outfits. So and some people were kind of upset about that, but I'm like, listen, I'm like, it's totally fine because it's taking storage, like stuff out of your storage. So it's a nice way to have multiple outfits to where you're not having to like carry everything around with you and it's not taking up room in your house. So, like, there are certain items in the game, like the little black ballerina flats and certain glasses and stuff, I'll have multiples of, but everything else, I'll just have, try to have one of each. Um, and this is every type of wand. There's, like, a Harry Potter wand, a rose wand, um, ooh, the ice wand. Yeah, I have most of these. So, and then I'll get the bug wand today at the bug off. Ooh, yes. And this is, like, <laughs> I'm, like, I've played a dress-up game for three plus years on my phone. Like, of course, I'm going to be super excited about the clothing. Um, and the, the fact that it shows you every single variation, I'm like, yes, fantastic. Um, it also shows you the primary colors because um, villagers do have color preferences. They have um, favorite colors that they like. So you can kind of easily tell by like um, their aesthetic and what they're already wearing. So... That's something to keep in mind. Um, it also has little check marks so that way you know what's what. Um, it also tells you what style it is because Label will come to the island and actually do like dress up challenges where she'll tell you a theme and then you'll have to pick out clothing that matches, matches the theme. So this will be helpful because once I had a goth one and um, I was super goth. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She said I didn't do a good job. <laughs> like, like, listen here, you hedgehog. Like, like I know more than you. <laughs> like, three plus years of love, love Nikki under my belt. I think I know what I'm doing. Um, it doesn't seem to have any information if um, they're seasonal. Which is unfortunate because a lot of clothing um, is tied to a specific season to where they'll only show up in the store during that season. Some of the stuff is really obvious, like the hula top, obviously that's going to pop up in the summer and then like the holiday sweater, winter. But uh, some of the other stuff, like I think the spangle shorts and co uh, comedian stuff is um, spring and I think the meme shirt is summer because I've only seen it during the summer so and trust me I do a lot of shopping on both hemispheres this is like my like my jam like my favorite hobby in the game is to go shopping on other people's islands it's so much fun plus I play turnips a lot so I'm like I have too much money <laughs> Like, more money than I will ever spend, despite the fact that I've had to move Mabel's house like five times at 50,000 pills a pop. <laughs> I'm just like, I just can't get it right in the right in the specific spot that I need it to be. But I'll try and do an island tour soon. Um, 
So it just kind of depends on how my computer handles it, but I would like to start doing um, little one-off videos while we wait for my computer uh, situation to change, uh, which is going to take a while because the parts are expensive. And, you know, it's one of those things. It's like um, up. You know, you break the jar for all these other things that come up. <laughs> um, because, yeah, it's like every time you save a little bit of money, like you get a flat tire or you have to replace a windshield on something or something else comes up. So that's okay, though. I just kind of feel bad and I miss you guys. So socks. So tell me guys in the comments, do you guys put socks on with everything? I'm really curious <laughs> if you do or not. I do uh, sometimes. So it's kind of funny. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, I feel like I should be wearing socks with this. Like, like the ankle socks. I don't know. And then other times I don't care. So it's kind of funny. Uh, the shoes. Yes, these are my favorite shoes. These final round toed pumps. Round toed pumps. That's a really weird way to say it. Anyways, I also like the noise that they make whenever you're running by. Like running on certain surfaces. Uh, bags. You can only really get from kicks unless they're like the mom's bags. Um, so it's always nice to see him. He's new to the franchise. He's a skunk. A cogni talking skunk. Uh, we kind of blew past certain sections in the game, uh, in the book, so we didn't really see his breakdown. Ooh, so all of the reactions. I'm kind of, it's kind of interesting that it's in this section and not like in the personality section, uh, talking about villagers, because um, here it has the breakdown of... Uh, what personality type will teach you what interactions. So I need to get cranky people so that way I can learn agreement, worry, sheepishness, bewilderment, and inspiration. So, and then it has like a, 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 a picture of each one so that you know. Uh, house, being able to decorate or uh, change the outward appearance of your house is amazing to me. Um, but I wish we had some of the styles that the villagers have because some of their houses are so cute. Uh, so this has the entire layout. Um, the more you upgrade your house, the more options you unlock. So kind of an incentive to pay the, the, the tom off a little bit faster. Uh, mailboxes, you can start moving your mailbox, um, picking it up and actually placing it somewhere else. Uh, around the half million loan mark. <laughs> um, I can't remember how many rooms that is. I think it's like all rooms before you get like the upper upstairs maybe. Uh, you can start moving your uh, your mailbox. So um, here it talks about fencing and uh, stuff like that. Uh, it talks about placing things in your house and customizing them. Uh, then I guess this is the furniture which unfortunately it only has like little color bubbles to show you different variations are available um, it doesn't have all of the colors like the clothing does which is a bummer I'm not I'm not thrilled about that but oh well like I guess they didn't want us to have a thousand page guide which I totally wouldn't find with um, yeah, I'm curious to see how different theirs are. Um, and if it's just like a size difference, like if ours is just bigger, so it's thinner, I don't know. Or if they got like information ahead of time, or I don't know. Like I can't read kanji or anything like that, so it's, I'll be able to look at the picture, so. Uh, so let's see here, it has all the furniture and then tells you how to get it. Um, up at the corner, like a little DIY symbol, if it's DIY. Uh, yeah. So, ooh, wallpaper. Yeah, this I really will be spending a lot of time in in the back of the book because I'm not entirely sure how I want my house to look. So I've just been cataloging a lot of stuff so I can order things as I figure it out. Um, 
Let's see here. I don't know if it has... Yeah, okay. It, it does have Sahara's st stuff in here because you can only get her wallpaper and flooring from her. It's, you can catalog it in a sense that it registers to your kiosk catalog, but you can't order it from there. You have to get it from Sahara. So, uh, Flooring and rugs. There's not a lot of rugs in the game. I think I've gotten a lot of them because anytime somebody says they have Sahara, I'm, I'm like, me please, like I would like to come over. Please and thank you. Uh, tulip bag. Oh, trees and saplings. Oh, and their values, which I guess is just a quick reference because they do kind of talk about this in another part of the game or uh, another part of the book. Oh, and the models, which is hilarious to me. It's got the sizes too, so two by one for the ocean sunfish. Um, yeah, the oarfish is huge, but it's only two by one, so you would think it would be larger. Um, the hammerhead shark is tiny, even though the shark itself is large. Um, where is it? Uh, so it's alphabetical, I'm assuming. Loach, horse, hammerhead. Yeah, it's one by one. It's so tiny. And then, like, you'll get, like, certain butterfly models that are, like, four times the size. I'm just like, what the heck? Like, you can tell who CJ, like, favors. It's the bugs. Yeah, so some of the bugs are, like, some of the sizes, sizes may vary. <laughs> Like the bug it, or the fish itself might be huge, but the model you get back is like super tiny. So yeah, it's kind of fun to kind of get it. Um, so let's see here. So another quick reference guide um, for music, because I'm like, the, this section covers a few important things that true collectors will care about that aren't already listed elsewhere in the book. This list was in a different part of the book, <laughs> but the covers weren't, so I guess that makes sense. Um, I've seen really cool uh, photos of people's houses where they've got the covers up on the walls to make like, interesting looking things. Um, oh my god. And it actually has this Easter egg in here. Um, so it depends on what type of, uh, what time of day and what day it is for the TV programming. Uh, for those who like to stay up late, tune in to your TV at exactly 3.33 a.m. on Saturday. Aha. See, my husband and I stayed up once and we didn't see it. We're like, dang it. But it wasn't Saturday, I see. Uh, and you might catch an unscheduled broadcast. Are otherworldly visitors showing an interest in your island? What's going on? Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the detail, but I also feel like it's overkill. Like, to have, like, the entire programming, I'm like, wow. Uh, postcards. It's got all the different types of postcards. I don't know why there's a checklist, because it's not like you collect them, like, in old games, where you buy the paper. Uh, some of these are seasonal, like the eggs, uh, to where they'll only show up at certain, uh, certain times of the year, like these, like, Christmassy looking ones. So, uh, let's see here. Oh, Amiibo. Which, I don't have any Amiibo, so, but this might be interesting to some of you out there. Uh, so really special character. So, are you a collector of Animal Crossing Amiibo cards or figures? You're in for a treat. Animal Crossing Amiibo cards are, of course, compatible with Animal Crossing. New Horizons. Use your cards to summon whichever resident you'd like to have move into the island via resident services. Page 30 has all the details about this process here. Uh, here we'll list all of the currently available Amiibo cards you can use to bring residents onto the island. All cards and figures listed here can be read by the game. Not uh, Any not listed will not work with Animal Crossing New Horizons. So, so that's kind of interesting. Um, so I guess like uh, the new ones, um, 
that are new to the game, like Audie, um, she's not listed, so even whenever they do eventually release it, um, currently, well, I would imagine they would patch the game, so that way cards for Audie, Raymond, and Judy, and I think that's all of them, um, that I can think of at least, uh, will be able to work, hopefully, eventually. I mean, that, that would make sense. Uh, you can even um, get Brewster in the game, which I know there's a lot of rumors that we're going to get Brewster. Uh, like a shot for him or something like that. So whether or not that happens, we'll see. Uh, oh, and they've got them listed by personality type. And then you've got checklists as well. And then a picture of the poster that you can get for them. And the frame picture that you can get. So you get the frame from the actual villager when you become like when you max out your friendship level with them and then the poster if you take them to Harv's Island to take pictures with them so yeah oh see yeah, I have Anka I have her poster because I <laughs> pulled her in at Harv's Island I love her she's so cute oh there's Zell he's my birthday twin June 7th so yeah all right, so I think that's kind of it. Um, I did see something poking out. Oh yeah, appendix, which is nice. Oh, New Year's Eve. This is, again, a weird place to put this. There will be hats. Okay, so spoilers. <laughs> New Year's can be quite a big event in the real world, and this is no exception in Animal Crossing. In every game, there has been a New Year's celebration, and there's one taking place on your island as well. Resident services will close on December 31st, so Tom Nook and Isabel can set up their display outside. Don't worry, other buildings in town will still operate per their usual hours. The pair can be seen wearing tuxedos and party hats. Very chic. You will also notice a big countdown clock outside. Just wait for 12 a.m. Speak to Tom Nook, and he will give you a party popper, a great way to kick off celebrations with a bang. When you t as talk with Isabel, she will give you a light stick. This item is sure to light the way for a new year. For even more festive goodies, speak with Tom Nook again, and you will have the option to buy a New Year's hat for 500 bells and a set of five party poppers for 300 bells. With one hour remaining until New Year, all of the island's residents will gather outside the resident services in preparation of oh, there's Apple. She's like one of my favorite villagers. <laughs> Um, when there are less than five minutes to go, your residents will get their own light sticks out. What a colorful display! The, color, the clock will then begin to count down once it hits zero. Happy New Year's! The fireworks show will begin and last until 2 a.m. on January 1st. Be sure to talk with your fellow residents to celebrate the New Year with them. Interesting. They're only available once a year. The hats. <laughs> Uh, so let's see here. A list of lists. So, let's see appendix, so that way you can quick reference stuff. Um, and then credits. I'm like, are there are no, like, fact checkers. <laughs> like, I've already found a couple mistakes, guys. Come on. Okay, and then there was something at the beginning. God, this thing is a behemoth. Um, there was something... At the beginning, oh wait, was that it? What's this? Oh, bookmarks. <laughs> I'm like, there's nothing else in here, right? Like, I don't know. Oh god, I'm afraid to do this. God, it's so heavy. Like, hello, anything? This is like what you do with your birthday card. Like, did I get any money? <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. Um, let's see here. So, bookmarks. These are cute. They're um. They're a nice paper. They're a bit, uh, they're not like cardstock or anything like that. Um, it, it kind of feels more like plastic than anything. Um, maybe. Okay, no, maybe not. I was gonna say it kind of feels like the cover a bit, but, um, definitely got some sort of coating on it at least. So, uh, cause it's definitely not plastic, it's paper. Um, ooh, so it's got a breakdown of lists, quick, um, reference stuff that you might want to reference a lot. Oh, and a legend. So spring, summer, autumn, winter, northern, southern hemisphere, which maybe if I would have slowed down in the beginning, I would have uh, figured that out sooner. Oh, 
so let's look at the clothing really quick. Oh god. Mm -hmm. I just had it. I saw some boots in here. This is more... Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so the squares are the color variations. The bubbles are available seasons. Okay, where's my quick reference catalog? 275. Okay. Already earning your keep bookmark. 75. So... Aha. Uh -huh. Um... Yeah, I, I don't think that's what that means. <laughs> Because these bubbles are gray. Oh, I see. The gray means that they're unavailable at that time. Okay, so it does um, indicate season. Okay, because I had asked uh, one of my mods who, um, she's in the UK, so she got hers way before we did uh, in the US. And I was like, does it tell you what season clothes come in? And she's like, no, it doesn't. I was like, oh, but it does. That's what the bubbles are for. Okay, Spangle, let me look. Because I'm like, I miss them because I restarted my island. And I need some sparkly shorts, guys. Spangle. 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 Anywhere? Somewhere? Okay. Maybe that's not what they're called. I'll have to look it up later. <laughs> and see if I'm right. Um, the comedian jacket. I know that that's what those are called. Um, so... Let's see... Comedian's outfit. Oh, year-round. Hmm. So, in the... Oops, sorry. Uh, so... Yeah, interesting. Cool! Well, this thing is a behemoth. It's not 100% factually accurate. Um, it seems well put together. Um, with the perfect binding, there are actually signatures. I don't imagine if they're sewn in. I don't think they are. Um, so, because it eventually... Um, with perfect binding where the page uh, is glued directly to the spine um, like they're not in signatures where they're folded um, they eventually fall out so like a lot of my old Zelda game guides uh, everything's falling out because <laughs> I've used them so much so I imagine in this one uh, they actually did use signatures because it's so thick um, and then they would need to do that um, as far as the um, I think we should have maybe gotten ribbons would have been really nice instead of bookmarks because I feel like bookmarks you lose so easily and compared <laughs> to the guide like these are like it's so puny like I appreciate them but at the same time I'm just like I don't know something longer maybe would have been nice I don't know um may I'm just being I'm just nitpicking at this point in time <laughs> Um, the dust jacket is a nice but really weird touch. Um, I am a paperback um, book person rather than a hardback just because I hate having to take care of dust jackets. So while it's nice and it's attractive, I can't say that I'm like pleased. <laughs> the fact that there's a dust jacket because it's just something extra to take care of um, or set aside and have it collect dust for the end of time which I guess it's supposed to do because it's a, a dust jacket um, but I can imagine it getting damaged a lot if you do keep it on and you do end up referencing the guide a ton so this was my review for this three nearly three and a half pound <laughs> guide stacking at 432 pages that's around twenty dollars us so it's actually a really reasonable price for um this behemoth i've already found a few mistakes in it um i imagine that i might find some more um if anything maybe it's just they worded things like in ways that it's like <laughs> Um, interpretation rather than like cold hard fact I don't know um, so I'm really curious to see what else I'll find in here but I hope you guys enjoyed the flip through and my thoughts on the guide 
Maybe this will help you decide if you want one yourself or if using free online services is totally fine. Um, also, feel free to join us on Facebook and Animal Crossing Zen Garden. Um, it's a no drama community based group instead of having people ask for exorbitant prices for villagers or um, trading things. Um, we don't really do stuff like that in there. Um, you know, a lot of people have issues with buying turnips or selling turnips because a lot of people ask for insane prices and stuff like that. Um, but we don't do anything like that. We're cool. You know, funny memes and whatnot. <laughs> I don't know. At this point in time, I'm starving and delirious because this has been the longest video for the longest book. Um, but yeah, until next time, take care, guys.